What's up guys? I am doing an impromptu game room tour. I recently redid my game room, gave myself a little more space, got rid of some stuff that I no longer wanted, never really wanted to begin with. You know how it is with a game room, you collect stuff, you get a bunch of stuff, a lot of it you don't really have passion for but you just have it. I have been cleaning that stuff out, streamlined my game room down to only the stuff that I'm passionate about. Now what you're about to see is just something that I shot uh, just really just out of the blue. I grabbed my camera, just started going around and talking about stuff. So this is the product of that. So let's take a look. All right guys, my game room starts by coming down into the basement where in the very first corner, my game room starts with my movie posters. I'm a major zombie movie fan, always have been, really love the older stuff from the 70s and 80s, so you'll notice a few posters here and there. Uh, game room starts with my uh, USS Enterprise up top there, uh, I've got some Neo Geo stuff there, Neo Geo CD, some MVS carts, some controllers some CD games in the corner. Uh, right here are some of my 3DO systems. I have a couple more than this uh, in storage, but these are the two that I play and have the room to display. So there are some of my systems. The games are back there. Some controllers are in there. Uh, these are my original Xbox games. Two modded original Xbox systems. And down there is my original Atari 2600 and some of my games. Now, moving over. All right, here is my PlayStation section, which, as you can see, consists of PlayStation 2 games. There are some PS1 games, my Vita, my PSP. I have two PSPs. Underneath of that are my PS1 systems. That's my original model on the left that's my lcd screen model in the middle and over there on the right is my mod chip version which plays backups in different regions below that is my hard drive enabled ps2 two ps2 slims and my original 20 gigabyte backwards compatible playstation 3 and an 80 gigabyte uh, playstation 3 Below that are a couple of uh, burned game cases and a couple of Street Fighter 2 controllers that were released for the PlayStation 2. Now, as you can see over here, I've got a curious selection of games on the wall. And a lot of people ask me, why the hell do you have games hanging on the wall? And I tend to hang things on the wall when they mean something to me. And the PSP game that you see up there, the Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles, that right there is actually the last new PSP game I ever bought. And the same thing goes for the two Vita games below it. And the two long box PlayStation 1 games you see on the wall, Mortal Kombat uh, 3 and Warhawk, they are actually the two reasons I was interested in the original PlayStation. They are the reasons I bought the system. I didn't really have any interest in the PlayStation in the very beginning. I wasn't even really sure what to make of it. But when I was seeing the pictures of Warhawk and I saw that Mortal Kombat 3 was going to be exclusive for the machine, I absolutely had to have it and that's the reason I put them on the wall, you know. I just remember very vividly, hey, I have to own a PlayStation and those two games got me to buy it and I never regretted it because the PlayStation was an awesome system. Alright, we are going to move on over here to my Nintendo shelf and I've got lots of goodies on the Nintendo shelf. Um, if you want to go ahead and start there at the very, very top, I've got... A couple of controllers for the Switch, the Wii, and a Zapper light gun. Below that, I've got a wireless uh, controller for the Super Nintendo, a Super, so uh, Super Scope 6 in the box. Just below that is my NES. Let me get a better picture. There we go. I have an NES 
uh, inbox control deck, a Nintendo Wii U, an NES Classic Edition, a Super Nintendo Classic Edition, and the European version of that console as well. And underneath of that, I have my black Super Nintendo, which I modified myself. When I bought it, it was in terrible shape. It was all messed up. It was discolored. It was broken. It was, you know, you'll find a reoccurring theme in my room where I take old systems and renew them. I find saving old systems to be, you know, worth the time and the effort. Uh, there's my Wii U that has an NES skin on it. There are a couple of games that have Amiibos with them. There is my uh, modified GameCube that has uh, the ability to play any region's games. Below that, you're going to see uh, my Super Famicom, which again, I rescued. It was all messed up. It was all discolored. I went ahead and refurbed it, painted it, got it back up and running. Um, behind that is my boxed mint original release Castlevania 4. Back in the back there, you'll see my boxed Super Famicom. And you'll see a bunch of games in there, a couple of controllers. Below that is my NES, which is another rescue that I repaired and got going. Besides that is my Famicom or family computer, which is the Japanese variant of the NES. I've got some games down in there. You'll also see back in the very back there my Game Boy, my original Game Boy that is boxed. I modified that guy so that it has a backlight in it. Uh, just below that, you're going to see my NES uh, shelf that has my GameCube games back there as well. There's games back behind those uh, as well. Now, below that is my N64 shelf. What you can see there back in the very, very back is my Japanese boxed Nintendo 64, my loose Nintendo 64, uh, some of my games, controllers, and below that is a Wii U controller, a Wii U Pro controller, my boxed uh, black uh, original Wii, and a couple of clone systems are actually back there as well. As we move over, we got some more games on the wall, and these are more games that I get asked about. Why the hell do you have games on the wall? These are other games that mean a little something too. Uh, the punch out that's on the wall right there is actually the last retail NES game I ever bought. Um, I didn't have this variation of punch out, so what I did was is I went ahead and bought it. I have no idea if that's the original seal or not. But when I found it, it was cheap. I bought it, and it was the last NES game I ever bought. So I hung it on the wall, and there it's been ever since. Over here, these two have more of a longer story. As you can see, that's Final Fantasy III and Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. And these two games are some of my favorite role-playing games of all time. I can't tell you how many hours I put into them. I mean, we're talking hundreds of hours between them. I absolutely adored them both. And what happened was is, is that the batteries died in them. They died in them on top of one another. Like literally weeks apart, both cartridge batteries died. Now, I'm an electronics repair guy by trade. So I could easily fix these. But when they died, they took hundreds of hours of gameplay with them. You know, in effect, this is my memorial to these games, man. I dumped so much time, so much effort, so much fun that when I lost those saves, it was brutal. So they sort of became my memorial. You know, these two games, I loved them to death, played them to death. I lost those saves, man. It crushed me. And on the wall, they went for memorials, man, just to remind me that the best things in life they simply don't last, and you got to appreciate them while you got them. 
Um, below that is a shelf of little knickknacks and toys. You've got Voltron. You've got a couple Star Wars figures. You've got a couple of Lego guys. Um, I'm a knickknack person, so you know I tend to like these things. Uh, below that is where my Saturn games uh, collection begins. I don't own many U.S. nor North American Sega Saturn games. I own some good ones, though. And they start right here. Um, as you can see, going on down, the two over here that don't have spines on them, that's Duke Nukem 3D and Scud the Disposable Assassin. These games right here on the other side are actually retail games that I have just custom boxes for. Um, uh, some of my Saturn games I bought pretty much when the Saturn was, you know, dying on the market and a lot of them you would find just disc only at rental stores and stuff like that so that's how i have a few of my saturn games uh below that these are actually reproductions down there you can see police knots the shining force trilogy in english panzer dragoon saga cotton boomerang those are my reproductions and then over here you have what starts the Sega Saturn Tower, which is where a good uh, percentage of my Saturn stuff is. As you can see up there, I have the Hori Real Arcade VF Stick. Just below that, the Hori Fighting Stick SS. I've got my Frankenstein Saturn up there. That's the one that I found and repaired that had the crushed in top. I don't know if I ever showed you guys this. But this Saturn was absolutely destroyed when I found it. You can see where I quite literally had to take Bondo and rebuild the Saturn. Like, I mean, I mean that in the absolute strictest terms, the whole top was just a mess crushed in. I had to rebondo it, reshape it, and then sand it and then paint it to get it as close as I possibly could. And what amazed me and what made me fight to keep this thing working was is that it still worked. It still read and played games even though it was utterly destroyed. So I had to keep it living. All right, so below the Frankenstein Saturn is my Virtua Stick, which is the HSS 0136, which is the revised version of that stick. Over here, you see I have the Photo Operator CD, Two Action Replay Pluses. I have the Eclipse Stick by Interact, sort of a cheapy uh, version of an arcade stick. Below that, you will see I have the Game Paradise VHS uh, Collector's Edition back there. I have the ASCII. Let me go in here. I have the ASCII arcade stick there. I have the memory card. Uh, the powered memory card, the Sega Saturn mouse right here is an official Sega coloring book, which I'll put that over there so you can see these. Right here is the Virtual Cop Special Pack, which is VF or uh, Virtual Cop 1, Virtual Cop 2, and a House of the Dead demo disc. Back behind that is a Virtual Cop standalone gun. And back behind that, if you can see it, is a brand new Sega Saturn Stunner that was released in North America. Okay, so now, below that, probably one of the more important shelves in my game room. Over there is my brand new campaign box for Virtual Fighter Remix. That is a brand new system. It's never been out of the box. It is in pristine condition. Over beside it is the launch Japanese Sega Saturn that I own. That system is the gray system that is in the long gold box. That is the very first system that was ever available. Right there. And in the corner you can see an eclipse pad. And in front of that the Japanese version called the tornado pad. Below that is my modified white Japanese Saturn my Sega Saturn twin stick for virtual lawn. Back beside that is my Cyberbots limited edition. 
behind or beside that is my that's the first model of the Virtua Stick arcade controller and in front of that is Knights into Dream 3D controller which came packed with the actual game uh, below that is my oval button high Saturn which you can see right there and my oval button uh, V Saturn which is right beside it and I don't know if you can see them but there are a couple of boxed controllers back in there with it and below that you can see down there at the very bottom is my oval button V Saturn on top of a uh, North American mission stick and beside that is the Japanese steering wheel in the gray color now we come over here and again these are knickknacks on my wall I got most of those from family members like I said if I stick it on the wall most of the time you know it's got something to do very personally with me uh, in this case it's gifts from my family and this is where a lot of my Japanese uh, Saturn stuff starts um, right over here in the corner you can see my Sega hard girl the Sega Saturn model and I started watching that anime it's actually really good if you haven't watched it you should look it up it's actually pretty entertaining and that starts my shelf of Japanese Saturn games which you can see goes all the way down there to the floor it's about oh I would say about four four and a half feet of just Sega Saturn games tall from Japan and I've got just about everything you could want uh, up there at the top is a bunch of Sega made stuff um, there's a bunch of the Capcom made stuff there's a bunch of shooters for the machine uh, SNK ports and just about everything in between guys I have a ton of really good Japanese Saturn games um, in total all of my Saturn games probably run in the neighborhood of close to 500 games now I recently contracted my collection overall trying to get rid of stuff I simply didn't want or didn't play and I did lose a little bit of Saturn Japanese games because I had a ton of doubles I had a ton of games that I had bought out of curiosity and they weren't worth a damn but I mean as you can see the Sega Saturn stuff that I do own is you know my collection isn't too bad I don't think uh, beside that is my Dreamcast stuff and as you can see at the very top there I've got my Total Control 3 which allows me to use my gen or my Saturn controllers with the Dreamcast besides that or beside that is the Japanese light gun with two VMUs in front of it there's my boxed Japanese Dreamcast system below that are my games some controllers some systems and I own I wanna say around 65 Dreamcast games total um, my Dreamcast um, collection is much smaller than my Saturn games that's by design because I just don't collect heavily for the Dreamcast um, I do have a fair number of Dreamcast systems I've got four that you can see right there the black sports system right there down here is a US white system and a Japanese white system those are my two players those are the two systems that I use to actually play in front of that is the Sonic uh, Adventure 2 birthday box right there so then moving over here I've got uh, some odds and ends going on over here and if you look up top there there's a PlayStation carrying case for the LCD screen there's some amiibo stuff up there back behind that are some Star Wars lunch boxes that you really can't see uh, here's some of my arcade stuff uh, some of my STV cartridges, cabling, super guns, things of that nature. There's a Voltron toy standing in there. 
All right, guys, and below that, you can see my PlayStation interface unit, which actually houses my core graphics, my uh, CD-ROM. Uh, right there in front, you can see my Avenue 6 pad, my uh, S-Video modded PC Engine, some of my PC Engine games, and some of my PC Engine box games over in the corner. The PC Engine is a system I used to collect heavily for, but really fell off in recent years. I've contracted that collection down incredibly to just games that I absolutely loved. Um, moving on down, you can see my uh, handhelds. Down there are my GBA, GBASP, my 3DS, my 3DS XL, and over there in the corner, you can see my Atari Lynx, my AC adapter, my Atari Lynx games, and a bunch of game, a bunch of loose games on top of that. Below that is my Xbox One shelf, which has a bunch of boxes and accessories to it. And below that, you can see I have um, some of my PC hardware boxes on the very bottom down there. If you come over there beside that, you'll see my custom-made switch stand which is shaped like a neo geo arcade unit the switch slides down into that i love that little thing and this stand right here is just actually controllers just controllers and accessories and wires and all kinds of mess and the whole thing is full of that playstation nintendo so on and so forth all right that switches me over here to the front of the room where i have my favorite Transformer comic series on the wall, that's G2. Uh, more <laughs> zombie movie posters. Uh, a camera that watches all of my stuff. And here is a 65-inch DLP HD television that I play the HD systems on right now. If you look there on the bottom, you will see my Xbox 360 is currently hooked up and running. And beside that as you can see is my Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 tower that has various games and whatnot with it alright moving over guys we are getting into my Sega Genesis Master System and whatnot shelf um, these are pretty much my 16-bit 8 and 16-bit Sega shelves right here we'll go ahead and start there at the top there is the at games handheld a master system clock a streets of rage 3 my mega drive and mega cd boxed um let me see if i can get the light off of it yeah right there you can see my castlevania new generation castlevania bloodlines and vampire uh killer below that is a launch sega genesis there in the corner beside that is a USB hubbed uh, Genesis that has a Raspberry Pi in it. Right here is actually my Sega Genesis shelf, which has, I've really tried to whittle that down to just games that I absolutely like and want and play on a regular basis. Uh, as we move on over, We'll take a quick look at my hardware down there. You can see there is a Mega Drive Japanese Genesis 2 Sega or Mega CD2. Below that is a Genesis 2 Sega CD2. Beside that is a Mega Drive and Sega CD1. And below that is an At Games, uh, one of the Firecore originals. Beside that is my Game Gear. And down there at the very bottom, you will see my Sega Master System and my Sega Mark III. My collections for those have contracted over the years. I've stopped buying games for that just for space issues and because it's so easy to play those games on something like a uh, EverDrive. Which, speaking of, over here, as you can see, my Sega Super 32X is there. Mega CD games are right there. Above that is my EverDrive and my Sega Nomad, the AC adapter for it. And 
some Sega CD games, which let me get the light off of it, some Sega CD games, and some Sega 32X games, and a Retro Compact, which is actually a pretty decent composite out only clone released only in Japan. They came with really good controllers. Um, if you're looking for something for a CRT, that Retro Compact right there is actually not a bad alternative to those cheap at games pieces of junk. Now, moving on beside that, we have my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now guys, I came at the end of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, run in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, but I did catch the very beginning of it before I stopped, you know, messing around with toys, and I still appreciate it, you know, the content and the movies, so I do like collecting, you know, figures that appeal to me uh, every now and again. Um, moving on down, that there is actually my Sony Trinitron television that I hook my retro systems to and play down here currently. Uh, we move over here and up at the top there you're going to see some odds and ends. My PlayStation 4 Pro, my Nintendo Switch, uh, some accessory boxes. Uh, right here is my arcade unit with an X arcade stick and that is actually one of the pride and joys of my game room. Every game room has to have an arcade machine in it. And this arcade, of course, is based off of MAME primarily. That's what I wanted on this machine was just a bunch of MAME games so I could relive the 80s and 90s arcade games. And moving on, let's go ahead and keep moving these guys let me see if I can back up and give you a better view these are my transformers guys right here I've got roughly two shelves full of transformers now my transformers journey actually began if you look there at the bottom shelf and the shelf above it my transformer journey began back in the mid 80s with the generation one stuff and if you can look down there you can see those are my original generation one toys those are the ones I used to play with man especially the ones down there on the bottom they are played with condition you know I played the hell out of those things played the hell out of uh, with those things and they're beat up but they were such an integral part of my childhood I grew up with a father that had um, and a problem with alcohol and of course that affected my life in very negative ways at times and Transformers was my escape very much like video games and you know Optimus Prime was the the father that I wanted my father to be and you know every every week you know every day on TV they would be taking care of their problems and I could escape into that and you know it, it, it was a big part of my childhood now as I got a little older I started as you can see in the next few shelves getting into the masterpiece line and that would continue on up with modern releases of the masterpiece then I started buying into some of the more modern toys which you can see up there with some of the masterpiece Optimus Primes some more masterpiece figures Megatron over there Fortress Maximus is part of the Titans Return series. I've got a knockoff Black Prime up there, which I put Decepticon stickers on and sort of made him a Nemesis Prime a G1 toy. Um, over here, at the very top, is a Masterpiece Megatron. There are some G1 commemorative re-releases. There are some more G1 toys in there. And then you start getting into some of the more modern stuff that I've been purchasing, which is some of the Combiner Wars and Titan Returns guys all the way down there to the floor. And over here, I've got some minifigs that I hang on the wall just because in this case, I ran out of room. And then there's another knickknack shelf 
that has odds and ends. All right, guys, moving on from there over here in the corner is my PC station that is set up into a bunch of amiibos that are on the wall. I always got off on having the amiibos on the wall. And here is my dual monitor setup. This is actually where I edit and record a ton of my gameplay. There's the Sega Saturn right there that I record gameplay. You'll see underneath of there is an entire library for the Saturn of burned games. And that's where the magic pretty much happens. So um, I'll edit there on the left. I'll kept, uh, capture gameplay there on the right. And that's, you know, that's where all my videos begin and end right there. So, and then that brings us back over to the movie pictures. And I'll give you one last look. There is the PC station. There is my Transformers, my Arcade, the Sega Genesis 8 and 16-bit area, Daytona USA, Odds and Ends, and a full 360 degrees. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. So there you go, my brand new streamlined game room. Now as you can see, my tastes are sort of all over the place when it comes to gaming. I don't own a ton of games, I never really intended to own a ton of games, I just tried to focus on the stuff that I really really wanted, really liked playing, and just stuff that made me feel good, childhood memories kind of stuff. If I had one particular piece of advice that I could give any of you for starting a game room or managing the game room that you already have, I would honestly say guys, you need to stick to buying the stuff that you truly care about. There's a lot of guys out there, they're shelf collectors. They just want to put stuff on the shelf and make everything look big, make it look full, make it look, hey, I've got 10,000 games. That's perfectly fine if that's the route you want to go. But for most of us, we can't own 10,000 games, either because of money restraints or space restraints or your family or whatever the reasoning may be. And in that particular case, definitely stay with the stuff that you care about, the stuff that you're passionate about, the stuff that you're going to play. If you stay on that route, if you stay with that particular mindset, often a game room doesn't get out of control and you care a lot more for the stuff in it. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time.